Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Barbara Garcia, Director of Health, and I will be your MC this morning. And I want to thank all of you for being here today for this important program announcement. I also want to thank Victoria Manor, one of our incredible residential care facilities for hosting uh, us this morning. So we have several distinguished leaders with us to this morning. Our Mayor London Breed, the, um, we hope to have our President of the Board of Supervisors, Malia Cohen, our newly elected Supervisor Rafael Mandelman from our 8th District, and Valley Brown from our 5th District. And of course, our owner of the Victorian Manor, Bernadette Joseph. And Bernadette is the second generation of owner, uh, owners of this type of facilities, and we really appreciate uh, her family's commitment to the communities that we serve. Our residential care homes are a very important form of housing in San Francisco, providing compassionate support for our communities who live independently. The Department of Health, the Department of Aging, I want to acknowledge that we have our department head, Shereen McSpadding, with us today. Um, both de uh, departments depend on these homes and facilities to ensure our clients are safe and that they get the care that they need. So we're so fortunate to work and live in a city that cares for most, uh, cares, it's, cares for its most vulnerable community members. Our strongest leader for this is our own mayor, Mayor London Breed. Mayor Breed is committed to ensuring that these, uh, those facing medical and behavioral health challenges are supported and provided care and housing that they need. So please welcome Mayor London Breed. Thank you, um, Barbara, and thank you everyone for being here today. Um, I'm really excited to be here, and as mayor, I've made it clear that one of my top priorities is to not only address many of the challenges we face with so many people struggling with mental illness, but more importantly, to address issues of homelessness. We have to make sure that we invest in preventing homelessness in the first place. And we know that this particular facility, along with so many others throughout our city, continue to struggle financially. They struggle financially due to lack of funding from the state, from the federal government. And what that means is time and time again in our city, we need to figure out ways in which we can continue to support the great work that this facility is doing and others like it. So today, I'm really proud to announce that we're investing over $1 million over the next two years from one-time revenue to stabilize residential care facilities that support our most vulnerable populations throughout San Francisco. And let me tell you what it's gonna do. It's gonna help 37 residential care facilities and house more than three, that house more than 350 people in our city, including many of our seniors. Some of these people suffer with serious behavioral health and medical issues. Many have history of homelessness. And we know, again, the best solution is to prevent homelessness in the first place. One of the care providers that support um, one of the ones that will receive funding, as we said before, is Victoria Manor, which we are here today, located um, in District 5, uh, which is now represented by Supervisor Bally Brown. This place has 90 beds, and it serves 26 clients for the Department of Public Health. Facilities like these have been under strain, as I said, in terms of lack of funding, and the city currently spends $2.5 million through the Department of Public Health to provide supplemental funding to close the spending gap. And I want to, again, appreciate Barbara Garcia for her hard work and commitment in identifying where the needs are and making sure that we are using city resources in the most efficient way to support this community. But this is a complex issue which requires a holistic approach to look at now and the financial challenges of the future. And this additional funding is a down payment and demonstrates our commitment to ensure these providers can care for and serve our community. The Department of Aging and Adult Services is convening a working group along with the Department of Public Health and the Office of Economic and Workforce Development to analyze the current demand and study options 
to meet the needs of the future throughout this city. I expect to hear recommendations by the end of this year, and until then, this funding will help ensure we continue to serve hundreds of San Franciscans who would otherwise be at risk of homelessness and who would otherwise not be able to care for themselves. I want to thank the supervisors who are here today for their tireless work in preparing this coming fiscal year's budget, um, who is now our board president and was leader during this budget time. Um, she was also the finance chair. Um, Supervisor Malia Cohen, um, and I am hoping to sign this into law, hopefully soon, and I've sent a letter to President Cohen outlining my support for this funding and how we're able to move forward in our shared priorities. We know that there is a lot of work to do and there ta it takes a village. It takes a lot of our departments. It takes members of the Board of Supervisors, and I am glad to be joined by someone who has been my partner, although he has just joined the Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Rafael Mandelman, who has really been a champion for issues around mental health, and we're so grateful for his support here today. And I also want to take this opportunity to acknowledge Roma Guy, who has also been an incredible advocate around mental health reforms and pushing for more mental health stabilization beds in our city to, again, care for our most vulnerable population of citizens in San Francisco. And so with that, I'd like to provide an opportunity for the president of the board, Supervisor President Malia Cohen, uh, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What a wonderful day, Mayor Breed. Off to a fantastic start. This is exciting news. Uh, I'm thrilled to join the mayor, as well as my colleagues, Supervisor Mandelman and Supervisor Valley Brown, as well as my partners uh, in the Department of Public Health that are standing up here with me to announce this $100 million um, dollars for board and care. Uh, the San Francisco has always been a city that has been committed to supporting our most vulnerable residents. And you know what? We haven't stopped yet. We are actually recommitting and reaffirming that commitment today. This year, I'm proud that, the, uh, that our budget process was quite frankly, most transparent and policy driven, uh, a collaborative pro process that we've seen to date. Uh, in the months leading up to the budget, we spoke with community activists, we've spoken uh, with our residents, we've polled our residents, and of course we've surveyed the colleagues on the Board of Supervisors. And resoundingly, without a doubt, we've heard that homelessness is a top priority for San Francisco, and particularly those that are suffering mental health issues. We have a responsibility to keep our residents, to help them remain in healthy conditions. Uh, it's a top priority of ours, and we want them to assist them in remaining safe and a safe place to live and access to care and treatment. And so it is actually through our, th our policy-driven uh, process that we, are at, that we allocated $47 million in additional funding for homelessness. I think that's an important figure to note. Um, the, board, the Board of Supervisors has directed over $4 million towards housing and homeless solutions, and it's going to manifest itself in several different ways, ways that you will be able to see instantly. First, in housing subsidies for families and seniors, mental health services and street medicine teams, patch funding for residential care facilities. That's a critical one. Patch funding for residential uh, care facilities, housing improvements for veterans, and of course, the right to counsel for those that are facing eviction. So this additional million dollars for the board and care facilities is, without a doubt, welcomed. Uh, it's in a welcomed investment to help 355 San Franciscans facing, um, facing displacement and that are also dealing with mental illness. This investment is directly aligned with the board's budget priorities and our commitment to ending homelessness and ensuring that our most vulnerable residents are safe, healthy, and housed. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, uh, President Cohen. It was one of the best uh, budget processes I've been involved in, so thank you so much. Um, we are so fortunate today to um, have our board, mem our board member from this district, Valley Brown. I've worked with her for many years, and uh, we're very proud to um, bring her up to the podium. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone that's here today, um, the residents of Victoria Manor. Also, thank you, Mayor Breed, for finding this additional funding, a million dollar funding, to help our board and care facilities throughout the city. And President Cohen and Supervisor Mandelman, thank you for supporting this. I think it's so important. Got to thank Roma Guy and Barbara Garcia because anytime I have questions, uh, they're the boots on the ground and I call them. And I just want to thank you for all the years you've been supportive and giving advice. I have a, a personal story. Um, a neighbor of mine actually was losing her place, uh, her roommate situation, because of her mental health issues. Um, when I saw her on the street, she told me, this was almost like 13, 14 years ago, and she, she told me her social worker suggested that she go into a room and, board, a room and care board facility. She was really frightened. Um, I think she had a lot of, she had no idea what they were about, and neither did I. Um, but then I saw her months later, and she was so well taken care of. She was happy, and she told me how much this really meant to her. And she, she had a family. I think she was in an eight uh, resident board and care. And ever since then, I've been very supportive of the board and cares. Because if it's the right, if it's the right situation for that right person, it's vital. It's taking care of our most vulnerable residents, and we need to step up. It's part of our housing stock, and I've said affordable housing is one of my priorities. This is affordable housing for our most vulnerable residents. I want to also thank all of the angels out there that take care of our residents here. I want to thank Bernie Joseph for being one of those people, second generation, that isn't saying, I'm, uh, I can't do it. I'm, you know, because a lot of people, a lot of the people age out in these uh, board and cares. They can't do it anymore. They don't have someone to replace them. And I just really think it's amazing that it's a family affair because they are a family here. So I want to thank everyone for coming out. And I'm very excited um, moving forward of how we look creatively of supporting our most vulnerable residents. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Brown. Um, our newest board member, Raphael Manderman, and uh, in our recent conversations with the supervisor, he's very interested in looking at housing, skilled nursing, and uh, residential care facilities, I know, is one of his top priorities. So, um, Supervisor Manderman, thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am incredibly pleased to be here to support uh, Mayor Breed and her team, Director Garcia, uh, for all the great work you've done to make this, uh, this a possibility, um, and, and for identifying these additional funds to help meet a critical need. Decades ago, when California set itself on the path toward deinstitutionalization and closing our state mental hospitals, we were promised a network of community care facilities. And I think we all know that that promise was never kept. But to the extent it was kept, it was through uh, places like this um, in the community where folks could get the care that they need. Today, San in San Francisco, we have lost and are at risk of further loss of, uh, of dozens, if not hundreds, of board and care facilities that provide housing and care for our most vulnerable neighbors. Um, I spoke, I've spoken frequently over the last year about my mother and her struggle, struggles with mental illness. She was housed for most of her adult life uh, in board and care facilities. Some were good, some were not so good, um, but, uh, but they were essential to keeping her housed. Make no mistake, but for facilities like this one, uh, hundreds if not thousands of additional San Franciscans would be in hospitals, in jails, uh, or on our streets. So um, as we work to move the thousands of currently unhoused homeless San Franciscans off the streets and into care, it's critical that we stabilize our existing stock of board and care facilities and create more care options uh, for those who need them. Um, I, I like that uh, the mayor referred to this as a down payment. I think that's the right way to think of it. It's, um, it's an important 
first step in addressing uh, a need that I imagine we will be grappling with uh, for most of your administration, but that I have complete confidence that working together uh, with Roma Guy telling us what to do, um, we, will, <laughs> we will be able to solve. So I'm um, very glad to be here and very uh, grateful to be included. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Mandelman. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, Bernie's uh, uh, family, her husband and, and her daughters here, and uh, I know that it's a family, uh, a family affair for this project. So I do want to thank you for um, all the work and, and support that you give to Bernie to provide such a beautiful location for uh, our clients. One of the important processes of uh, for our clients is social support, and so to be together and to learn together and to support each other is one of the uh, important processes and also important contribution that a facility like this provides. So with, um, with such a great honor, I wanted to also acknowledge Kelly Hiramoto, who is our transitions director, who really manages with Bernie. And I heard she was one of the best negotiators, as Bernie says, that uh, <laughs> she does what Bernie, what the Kelly tells her to. Uh, but we uh, are so appreciative of both of the teams and uh, so appreciative of you, Bernie, uh, and bring you up the Victorian Manor uh, owner. Good morning. I'm Bernadette Joseph, owner and director of operations at Victorian Manor. Thank you, Mayor Breed, Supervisor Cohen, <coughs> Supervisor Mendelman, Supervisor Valley Brown, and um, Director of Health Garcia, Barbara Garcia. Thank you for being here and for your support for our seniors. Here at Victorian Manor, we serve over 90 elderly clients with various needs, including dementia, medical, and mental health needs. Our home provides a place where seniors can live in the community and be as independent as possible. We welcome with open hearts and open arms a diverse group of residents, including a frail and vulnerable elderly population, and we see every day what a big difference it makes for them to have the right place to live with the full activity program that enriches their lives. Thank you, Mayor Breed, for recognizing the work of residential care facilities for the elderly like Victorian Manor. The new funding will help us make ends meet and continue to serve the seniors that we care so much about. We are happy that the city is also looking into long-term solutions to keep facilities like ours, residential care facilities for the elderly, to, uh, to have them remain in San Francisco. So thank you so much. Thank you, that's the end of our program. Um, and I'm sure the press may have some questions and I'll let that to the press. Thank you. If you have anyone has any questions, you can ask now. On um, this topic, anything off topic, we'll take them aside. <laughs> can you explain specifically what the funding will go toward in terms of, is it services, is it more beds? Um, One of the um, important um, things that we've done with the facilities is that we provide them an extra amount per day for um, the bed. And part of that is because we have individuals with different levels of need, um, and that really helps for the staffing of the beds, making sure the right staff for the right clients and their needs. So this will provide extra dollars for a per bed uh, cost that we pay for, and that we work out with the owners to ensure that they have the right staffing that they need. I think, Bernadette, if you'd like to add anything to that. <laughs> um, the department will be working with the Board of Supervisors and the Mayor's Office has allowed for, it's a one-time dollars uh, the Mayor has allocated for this, uh, for these services. Will that money go towards staff, wages, and health care? Eventually it does, and but as you uh, know, we pay per day, per diem days, and then that extra dollars go to the staffing as well as the wages. Mayor Bree, can you talk more about uh, why this is a, a piece of the puzzle that deserves this extra money? There are a lot of other things out there that could help as well. So I think that we don't spend enough time talking about prevention. 
stopping something from happening in the first place. When you think about the amount of money it takes, whether it's wages for employee, whether it's an increase in the dollars that it costs to feed people, whether it's additional services, physical therapy, um, social services, and things that go into actually taking care of some of the individuals who are in boarding care, the costs are going up. And then what happens when there's a huge gap, that means most likely sometimes they can't necessarily take care of all the clients that they have. And the reason why this is important, because if they have a budget shortfall, then that means they go from 90 beds to maybe even 80 beds so that they could at least afford to cover the cost of those particular individuals. This is important because where are we gonna put Eight, uh, 10 people that might be displaced because of a lack of funds. And so in looking at you know all of these particular board and care facilities and the increase in costs and the challenges to meet the need, we have to make sure that we keep every single bed. We have to make sure that we do everything we can to prevent you know something from happening in the first place and that is the possibility of losing those beds, which means that those people are gonna have to go somewhere. And we have to do everything we can to make sure that they don't end up on the streets. And that's what this is about, is prevention. Any other questions? Can someone talk a little bit about the, uh, I'm just really shocked by the number of, of, that we've lost, um, looks like almost 30 of these uh, facilities in the last five years, why that's happening and, and it feels. Well, it's exactly what uh, Mayor Bree talked about was the fact that, um, and also the fact that some of these were family owned um, and the cost of, of doing this, and this is all over California, this is not just San Francisco, that the cost of doing these types of facilities, particularly as um, they depend on the SSI uh, I dollars that comes in, um, doesn't always match the overall cost of the buildings and so, or the facilities and the services. So um, exactly why we're trying to provide them some stabilization, and we started doing this almost uh, 11 years ago, really looking at how to um, work with the residential care facilities in both ways. One to provide them more dollars to serve the clients that have higher need and also to help them um, c cover their cost that SSI doesn't always cover because the SSI cost and their increases does not match the cost of doing their business. All right, thank you. Thank you.